Hi, good morning. My name is Father Raya Pakasi. I am from the village called Ekhattupadi, near Vellu, South India. Today I am going to talk about sociobiology. There are two words there. One is society and another one is biology. Society, it's an outer dimension and biology is our inner dimension. Society has so many uh, practices. Um, actually, society influences biology. In other words, society influences human social behavior. This is how we develop our traits. We behave. Even though I'm not a good person, I have to be good because society expects that. I am a liar, but I try to speak only truth because society expects that. I am a thief, but I portray as a uh, decent uh, gentleman because society expects that. So this is socio-biology. Without society, without our culture, humans can behave differently. We don't know good or bad, but they can behave as their own traits compel them to act. So it answers sociobiology, especially the study of sociobiology, answers uh, many questions uh, which we have been asking for two millennia about what are we doing? What is human nature? Why humans behave like this? Is there a virtue? Is there a life after death? And why we are promoters of justice? And why we want to talk about kindness and mercy? So for all this, uh, humanity has not yet found uh, a proper answer. But sociobiology comes very close to find some answers. So anyway, we have to ask so many questions in order to understand sociobiology. Why do people behave the way they do? Simply look around you and examine people's different behaviors, their actions, attitudes, and even facial expressions. This is sociobiology in action, explaining why humans do the things they do from an evolutionary perspective. In other words, in you know, our biology, evolutionary biology. Social biology is a study of the biological basis for social behavior in every species, not only human. Let us put it even for dog, why dog behaves. Why God shows, uh, dog shows love and gratitude. Why snake always displays anger and violence. So why? That is a behavior. That's social behavior. Every species behave according to their own uh, so, uh, traits. So we study why they behave like that. It is essentially an adaptation, adaptationist approach to social behavior. The adaptation comes into play that is the application to social behavior of the evolutionary theory of Charles Darwin expressed in terms of modern genetics, including the selfish gene concept. Social biology is an area of biology that is closely related to biological psychology and specifically to evolutionary psychology. It has been applied to explain and solve some problems in evolutionary theory, such as altruism, infanticide, and uh, sex gender differences in behavior. First noticed in different uh, ecological systems, sociobiology was used to track different mating habits, flight patterns, and hive societies of social insects, such as bees and ants. In 1975, scientist Edward o. Wilson published a book called Sociobiology, The New Synthesis, which transformed the study of sociobiology to focus 
on the human species. Before that, sociobiology was discussed among vertebrates and invertebrates, amphibians and reptiles and birds and um, uh, uh, orangutans and gorillas, apes and monkeys. But this is the first time after this book, Edward Wilson wrote in 1975 the title Sociobiology, the New Synthesis. Uh, the discussion focused on human species, the Homo sapiens. It is seen as a controversial topic in the 1970s. Sociobiology to this day still creates heated topics among clinicians and other scientific researchers in the field of human behavior. Before the 1970s, behavior was typically monitored or pre predicted by researchers, focusing on environmental and nurturing aspects of an individual's life. However, sociobiology brought a new perspective to the table, that is genetics. So before 1970, the environment played a role, uh, the environment influenced an organism to behave in such a way. Uh, environment played an important role to develop some of the important traits of an organism. But now the new thing has come, genetics, our own DNA. How our DNA develops is the survival of the fittest. So we adapt, it comes into the field of adaptation. The genes that can adapt. So today a lot of focus on sociobiology uh, falls on genetics to explain human behavior in a society. This new and uh, different approach to psychological behaviors allows scientists to sit back and ask the question of can a human's behavior be passed on from generation to generation through a genetic process? Think about your own family and different behavioral traits. Perhaps your father suffers from depression. Maybe your mother is quick to anger. Can you see any of their behaviors reflected in your own psyche? Some researchers would say that this is sociobiology. With different genes being passed along to family members throughout different generations, allowing them to experience similar behavioral patterns. When studying sociobiology, it is important to understand the term natural selection. Natural selection is a process in which different biological traits become more and more or less common based on the effect that a certain trait has. For example, deer mice that migrated to the sand hills of Nebraska change the color of their physical appearance. Over time, natural selection indicated that in order for the deer mice to survive, they would need to be able to blend into the sand, changing the color of their appearance from dark brown to light brown. The trait allowed the deer mice to survive in their ecological system. Even in my own village, Ekatupuri, I just live at the foothill of the Eastern Ghats, and uh, there used to be a big mountain here, dark stones and uh, corroded, uh, a lot of lichen and moss, grass and plant roots. So I'm talking about my grandfather's time. The mice were black because they were blending in with the black background of the mountain because the eagle can't see them because the survival of the fittest and the, if the uh, mice has white color, uh, the eagle can spot out against the black background of the mountain. So that is not going well for the mice, isn't it? So that's why they developed a black color. But now I find a lot of white mice running around. You know why? Because the, the people uh, extract stones in the, in the quarry uh, under the mountain and uh, they <laughs> uh, extract so much of stone and while they uh, break with the dynamite, uh, the white sand is exposed, uh, the mountain full of now white color. So when I go for a walk, I find white mice. Then I wonder what happened. There were black mice all over, but now there are only white mice. Then it 
<laughs> rang the bell and told, see the background is white. Now the natural selection has enabled the mice to go for a white suit. So all the mice is all white. But now the eagle can't spot against a white mountain. If the mice is still black, they'll be clearly visible from space where the eagles fly. They can easily come and take the mice away. So this is the beauty of nature, it's the beauty of nature. Uh, always nature is one step ahead. There is a one quote I read recently, uh, just I, want, I remember it, so I want to share with you. Uh, the moment the humans come up with the latest mouse trap, the nature will come up with latest mouse. Happy sociobiology. Thanks.